All right, let's talk about interfaces. So we talked about an abstract class. That's, that's one where there's a declaration of a method, but no implementation for that method. So the idea is that a class could be too generic to implement a method, and it will rely on the subclasses to fill in the missing details. So for example, we had it, we saw an example of an employee class that had this abstract method called getWeeklyPay uh, that the derived classes hourly worker and salary worker filled in based on how those classes worked. Right, the hourly worker had uh, an hourly pay rate and a number of hours. The salary worker had a salary that was divided by 52. Okay, so let's let's imagine uh, you know another hierarchy here. We might have this class that represents uh, some fruit, right? And all fruit have some things in common, right? They have, oh, I don't know, let's just say a weight. All right, so that's a piece of data that could belong to the fruit class. Every fruit also has a color. Right. So there's something in common that all fruit have. Right. So we would want to push that commonality up the hierarchy. So we can have an apple class extends the fruit class. Banana class extends fruit. Okay. And they would both, again, absorb all of the data and methods from from the fruit class. Okay, so you know when we were writing the fruit class, we could do something like this. We have a private data member for the weight, and then let's say we have some uh, getters and setters. Okay, but fruit also have something in common. All fruit can be prepared. So the question is, well, how do you prepare a fruit? And that's not such an easy question to answer because it really depends on the type of the fruit. We can't answer that question in the fruit class. Right? We, can, we can say that all fruit uh, are prepared, but we, we can't say exactly how uh, the fruit is going to be prepared. That that is something that must be deferred to the derived classes. Okay. So the fact that all fruit share this common behavior, right? They all can be prepared. Okay, that's something that all fruit share, but we can't answer the question about how to prepare at this level, uh, because really it depends on whether it's an apple or a banana or grapes, right? So if we have an abstract method, okay, any class that has an abstract method must also be declared as abstract. So the the fruit class must be a public abstract class called fruit, and now the apple and banana classes will extend the fruit class. They will absorb the weight and the the getters and setters for the weight. Uh, and they'll also be required to provide some implementation for prepare. And that's really going to be uh, dependent on, on the fruit, because different fruit are prepared differently. Okay, so with an abstract class, remember we can't create 
uh, objects of that type, but we can use references to that type. Okay, so let's pretend we are in some other code here. Okay, this is a reference to a fruit object called F1, so it's a reference, it's a pointer. We could set F1 equal to the result of calling new and saying we want a new apple. We can say f1 dot get weight. Right? That that comes from the inherited part of uh, the fruit class. Okay, and we can also now, uh, assuming we have implemented uh, the prepare method in the apple class, with this fruit reference, which happens to point to an apple, we can call prepare. And in fact, we can use the same reference, f1 equal to a new banana. We could say f1 dot get weight. And again, f1 dot prepare. Okay, and, and What's going to happen, of course, is polymorphism is going to make sure that when the fruit reference points to an apple, we call apples prepare. And when the fruit reference points to a banana object, we call the bananas prepare. Okay, that's, that's kind of the definition of polymorphism. The, the method to be called is determined not on the type of the reference, but on the type of the object that the reference points to. Okay, what we cannot do, though, is we can't say something like this. We cannot instantiate or create objects from an abstract class. Why? Because, well, the fruit class provides no implementation for prepare. So what if, you know, if we were able to do this and we called prepare, well, what would happen here? Right, there's, no, there's no implementation, so uh, we're not allowed to do that. We're not allowed to create instances of abstract classes. Okay, so an abstract class can include uh, member variables and methods. The, the fruit class is a typical example. It has a, a double for the weight. It has these getters and setters. Okay, an interface is a variation on the idea of an abstract class. With an interface, all of the methods are abstract. None of them have bodies. And with an interface, you cannot have any data members. Okay. Now, in Java, multiple inheritance is not allowed. You're, you can only extend one class. However, you may implement one or more interfaces because you're not really absorbing any data or any particular method bodies. Um, there is no data or behavior. Okay, when, a, when a class implements an interface, it's really agreeing to provide a definition for all of the methods that are part of the interface. It's kind of like signing a contract. A class that implements an interface guarantees that it will provide some kind of implementation for the methods in that interface. And again, we can, we can implement multiple interfaces because really we're just absorbing the contract. We're absorbing the fact that uh, the implementing class will provide some kind of implementation. It's totally dependent though on the, uh, on the deriving class to provide that implementation. However, we can still use a reference of the interfer interface type uh, to call the interface methods. And, and we'll see, I'll show you an example of that in a second. And of course, polymorphism will ensure that the correct method is called based on the type of the object. Okay, so let's look at another example. Let's say we're. Uh, modeling these uh, animals. Let's say we had a whale class and maybe a lion class. These are really very different animals. Uh, so let's, let's say for the purposes of this example, they share nothing in common uh, with one exception. Right? Both, 
both the whale and the lion they they kill their food okay um, but of course they do this completely different ways right a whale just swims by and opens his mouth and a bunch of plankton fall in and and he he kills them that way whereas the lion has to hunt uh, his prey so they they both kill uh, their food but they they do it differently okay and that's that's really the only thing they share in common so what we can do is we can provide an interface let's call it carnivore and we'll provide this method called kill now usually the way we we identify uh, an interface is um, we do can do one of two things we can in one of these diagrams we can write the word interface the preferred method is to have the text be uh, show up in italics but since I can't draw in italics uh, we can use this these two less than signs two greater than signs and in between put the word interface okay so um, we're going to use our our same old arrow notation here okay, I kind of screwed this up here but both the whale and the lion implement the carnivore interface okay, what that means is um, the whale and the lion they're going to provide a method called kill and of course they're going to they're going to do things probably wildly differently but they do share the fact that they are both carnivores okay so the the way we create an interface it's similar to how we create a class Okay, but again, all interfaces are made of entirely of methods that have no implementation. And the, the syntax says because it's an interface, we don't even have to mark this as abstract. Okay, uh, an interface is a purely abstract class. Okay, there's no data, there's no implementation of methods. Okay, so uh, other classes can implement interfaces. Implement is a keyword. So if we had our whale class, so public class whale implements carnivore. Right, so there are a lot of things that make a whale a whale, but because this class implements the carnivore interface, somewhere we must provide a method called kill. Okay, our lion class also implements this interface. And again, what makes a lion a lion is it does all kinds of things, has data and, and methods. But because the lion class implements the carnivore interface, it must also provide some kind of implementation for kill. Okay. Then of course uh, the payoff of, of all of this is that we can still use a, a, a reference of type carnivore. So let's pretend we had a driver, public static void, main, and somewhere in here we are going to create a whale object. And create a lion object. Okay, and 
I'm going to in a second write this method called carnivore eat. Okay. And this is going to take as a parameter a carnivore. Okay, but the whale object is a carnivore because it implements the, the carnivore interface. And the lion is a carnivore because it implements that, that interface. So the, the is a relationship still holds true. with interfaces. Okay, so here's the, the parameter C is a carnivore object. We could say C dot kill. Right. And notice um, we don't we don't really care that uh, the whale is a carnivore or lo the line is a carnivore up here. Only in this method do we really care about the the fact that that these things are carnivores. So the compiler will ensure that we only pass uh, carnivore objects to this to this method. So the the static uh, compiler will will check those types for us. Okay, so interfaces are really useful for capturing similarities between unrelated classes without forcing a class relationship. Right? The only thing the whale and the lion have in common is that they are carnivores. Um, so it, it's it's nice that we we can declare some methods that one or more classes are expected to implement. We're enforcing this contract that if you want to call yourself a carnivore, all you have to do is provide an implementation for this kill method. Okay, that's nice. Another thing interfaces are useful for, for is determining an object's programming interface without revealing the internal details of the class. So people, you want people to become dependent on an interface rather than an actual class because the, the details of the class will change over time. Ideally, the details of the interface will not change. The, the interface should stay the same. Okay, so let me give you another example here. The, uh, we've talked about array lists. The array list class implements this interface called the list interface. Okay. With all lists, you can add, you can get. These are methods that belong to the interface. So I could uh, I could show you the Java doc for the list. Okay. So this interface called list is a templated type. Okay. So what can you do with the list? Well, you can add, you can clear, you can get, you can get these iterators, you can remove, you can get the size. These are things that are common to each and every list. Okay. The Javadoc, though, also lists the different types of known implementing classes. So here's our ArrayList. ArrayList implements this interface. Right? Uh, and then there's this, another type of list, a linked list. Right? That also implements the interface. Okay, so um, you should create references to the generic interface type and specify the concrete classes only when you absolutely have to. Okay, so if I were creating a, a list of names, for example, instead of saying my reference type is going to be an array list called names, okay, instead I would make its type just a plain old list interface. Okay, at some point though I do have to decide what concrete list type do I want and I, I would do that here. Okay, but all I really care about is that I have some kind of list. All lists kind of have the same interface. You can do the same things with them. However, they behave a little bit differently. The array list is a is a an array based list whereas a linked list is a 
uh, list based with based on nodes, right? Okay, so if I again had a function maybe called print list, I might pass in this uh, generic list called names. And here the parameter type, again, is the generic interface list. Okay. And I know with a list I can do whatever's in the list interface. So I can add and get and do all those things. Okay. So later if you decide a link list is a more appropriate type, maybe because you're, you're worried about memory consumption or you're doing a lot of inserts in the middle, you can change the code. Right? We can go up here and just make this one change to a linked list. Okay. And none of the other code has to change. This function, this method that took a generic list, doesn't care whether it's an array list or a linked list. As long as it, it implements that interface, okay, it, it's going to work correctly.